the ROI on this long term is the highest ROI or one of the highest ROIs out of any kind of digital marketing you do, which is why so many businesses love it. My name is Mo Bass and I'm the CEO of Acadium. And Acadium is a platform that lets you get hands-on work experience in digital marketing, working with a vetted business owner remotely and it's totally free. So whatever you learn here in this video or in any coursework, you could apply in the real world with a vetted business owner to get that hands-on work experience. It's totally free and remote, 10 hours a week for three months is what an apprenticeship is. So let's talk about SEO and what this means for a business. I love SEO. It's one of my favorite channels of marketing. I think it's wildly underrated. It's gotten the backseat ever since social media came out but it's one of the most profitable ways to grow a business. Now, SEO has changed a lot. Back in the day, you could do all these kind of hacks and you start ranking on the first page of Google. This is no longer the case. SEO now, you have to be disciplined in how you uh, create SEO content. You have to create content that is both search engine friendly and human friendly. So it has to be something that Google, Bing, and these other search engines can easily read and understand. So there's a way you structure the content for this, but it has to also be engaging to the reader where when they read this content, they're going to convert on your call to actions. So let's talk about the structure of a web page for a second. There's a couple of key things you need to get right. One is you need to get the keywords right. This is a common mistake, and I ran in this mistake often where you put all this effort into creating content and it could even rank, but the keywords you selected, you didn't put a lot of thought into. And they're not actually good keywords for your business. So nobody is converting. This is a huge waste of resources. So the first thing you should do, and the most important thing you should do, is identify the right keywords for your business. Check the search volume Check the competition on those keywords. There's tools like Ahrefs that will tell you how many people are searching for that keyword, how competitive it is. There's even tools that tell you what you need to do to rank for that keyword, like how much backlinks you may need to get. A lot of tools out there, I'm not going to get into the tools so much because a few quick Google searches will give you those answers, but the tools are valuable and you will need tools to do good SEO, okay? You will need to get these tools. There's no way around it. They just save you so much time and give you insights. So keywords, identify the keywords. And what really works is you cluster the keywords into relevant topics, which will give you a few different ideas to work with for content. Like for example, in our company, Acadium, how to launch a career in marketing is a keyword cluster. Now for that cluster, we may create a blog about how to launch a career in social media, how to launch a career in content marketing, how to launch a career in paid ads, right? These are all part of the same keyword cluster. Google likes this, okay? It identifies these clusters and says, this person's an authority on this type of content. And it makes it way easier to build that kind of content as well. So you want to create keywords and then you want to cluster keywords into high value clusters and that'll give you a basic uh, uh, direction to work from. Now, when you are creating this content, in today's world, long form content does a lot better than short form content. You're not going to rank on a 250 word article that you write in a competitive keyword. You, you probably won't rank on that unless you have a very high domain authority. So you want to create a longer form content. Not only is this better for SEO, it is also better for uh, the reader because they get a lot more relevant information. And you can create a link tree in your content because it's long. You can mention another blog you wrote or another article. And then it allows people to keep crawling your content, which will increase your conversions on, on that blog. All right, so keyword cluster, long form content, then you wanna use the right tags. You wanna tag the URL properly with the keywords. You wanna tag your photos properly, and you wanna use the right headers in all 
parts of the blog. This is basic SEO. If you don't do this right, you're not gonna do really well on SEO. It's very simple. You just, there's a lot of tutorials on this that show you how to put the right tags into the keywords, uh, into the blog, because again, uh, Google will put more weight on them. So if your title is how to launch a career in social media, that carries a lot more weight with Google than if it's in the actual article. Of course, you want it in both. Uh, so make sure you title properly. Another thing is Google's gotten pretty advanced now where it could recognize what's above the fold. And the fold is the part of your screen that's visible when you go to a website before you scroll down, okay? So you need to be really smart in what you create that's above the fold, okay? That's where your prime keyword action needs to come in. Not necessarily your call to actions, okay? Because people will keep reading usually. But whatever keywords you're targeting for need to be above the fold. It'll help you with your ranking. Another thing that's been really popular with Google and SEO is local lists. Doesn't apply to every business. But if you can create a local list, like for example, top 10 restaurants in Ottawa or top five hairdressers in Miami, whatever the local list is, that does better with Google because people are usually, if they're searching for like hairdressers, they're usually going to want to get the top place in their location, right? And Google knows this. So it'll rank lists that are local higher than, you know, a general article on how to find a good hairdresser, right? So it's very smart, Google. And you can work with its intelligence. You just got to be smart like Google. All right, so local lists do well. Keywords, uh, clusters, long form, right tags, and then you need to be consistent in your content. So you need to make sure you're constantly publishing and you're updating your articles. So if you published an article two years ago, you should update it, especially if it has traffic. You should change the date on the article as well. Again, Google's very smart. If it's more relevant, it'll get a better ranking. So if you publish an article two years ago and it's doing well, go back and edit it. Add new content that's relevant to you today review the call to actions and update the uh, the updated at uh, timestamp, which will be represented in Google, okay? Another thing is a site map. You wanna make sure you have a really good site map where everything is linked on your website to make it easy for Google to crawl your website. So it helps, again, with the keyword cluster strategy. Google will recognize these clusters on your website and it'll help with your ranking. Um, another thing is domain authority, right? So now we're, now we're, we got the content piece. There's a few pieces. There's the content piece. that's really important. There's the structure piece. That's really important. How you structure the keywords and the sitemap and the structure of the actual blog with the right titles in the right places. And then the content itself, how you, you know, long form made for Google and also for the reader. And then you come into backlinks which will promote your domain authority. Domain authority is really important. Google wants to rank uh, domains that have high authority. It's like in real life. If you have a high authority, you have more influence. It's the same thing in Google. So how do you get more authority? Well, you need to be cited by other websites. So you gotta create content and you gotta get backlinks. And the better quality backlinks you get, and what makes a good quality backlink is it's linked to a high quality website. So if you're linked to another website that has a high domain authority, it'll increase your domain authority. It's kind of like if you're hanging out with the cool guys, you, you know, your cool cred's gonna get up a little bit, right? So Google, uh, it clusters your popularity based on who connects to you from other websites. So for example, if you have seen, if you're writing an article, about fashion and you have Vogue magazine linked to you, well, Vogue, Vogue has a very high domain authority and that's gonna jack your article's authority up and your website's authority up. So compare that to like a local fashion outlet writing and linking to you. It's a huge difference between the two. So get high quality backlinks. You don't need a bazillion of them. This is a mistake some SEO marketers have done is they figure, oh, I'm gonna outsource this to like a, a link farm in India and I'm gonna get like 100 backlinks. 
Well, Google is not going to give you very much authority. They prefer high quality. You're better off with two high quality backlinks than a hundred low quality backlinks. Now you can buy high quality backlinks. They are expensive. They're actually more expensive than the actual article a lot of the time. Um, you can buy them or you could reach out to different websites and or guest blog. There's a lot of different methodologies you can use to get them. I'm not going to get into the specific techniques of how to convince people to cite your article. It starts with great content, of course, and reaching out to the right people who write on this. And you can guest blog on theirs. They can guest blog on, on, they can guest blog on yours. And then you can guest blog on theirs and kind of reciprocate that way. But it's a process, right? You can, and of course, you can buy backlinks. It's just expensive. It doesn't always work. But these are the strategies you need to rank keywords and be smart. Of course, some keywords are way more competitive than others and aren't worth targeting right off the bat. So be smart which ones you focus on first. It takes three months to really start seeing results from SEO and you should see really good results within six months. And if done well, this will feed you for life. It's an evergreen strategy. It stays there. Once you rank, you usually stay ranked, right? So the ROI on this long term is the highest ROI or one of the highest ROIs out of any kind of digital marketing you do, which is why so many businesses love it. And you need to at least have a basic understanding of this as a marketer. So you could at least hire a contractor and have an idea of how to work with them or maybe do it yourself, but it is kind of a full-time thing. So unless you're an SEO specialist, you may want to outsource this. And hopefully this video gives you an idea about to watch out for when you are outsourcing, you know, good content writers, and you need good link builders, and they're usually separate entities. They're not usually the same entity. And it's your job as the marketer to come up with the keyword strategy and the content strategy. My name is Mo Bass, CEO of Acadium. If you want to get hands-on work experience in SEO or anything digital marketing, come to Acadium. You can do an apprenticeship with a vetted business owner. It's remote. It's free. It's 10 hours a week on your schedule. It's a way you can get that experience to propel yourself forward in your career and really apply these theories that you're learning here today. If you want to learn more from me or you want to follow me or send me a message about your journey, you can add me on Instagram or Twitter at Real Mo Abbas. That's Real and then Mo, M-O-E, Abbas, A-B-B-A-S. Good luck on your journey.